Today, we're going to be talking about the current trends and expert insights in the dental practice market with Maria Malone. She's a CPA, a certified valuation analyst, and really today we're tapping into the leading M&A advisor in healthcare, also with a deep knowledge of dental industry located in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, Her mission is to help both individual businesses and multi-site groups, which we'll talk more about, navigate the complex landscape of capital or strategic transactions. Welcome, Maria. How are you? Um, Great to be here, Melissa. Always a pleasure to join you on your podcast and uh, looking forward to this conversation today. The the fixed assets of the business business are um, very small relative to the actual value of the business. And so, you know, when you think about the allocation or what makes up the value, oftentimes we're seeing about maybe 20% or even less is assigned to tangible or fixed assets. Um, and the balance is, is assigned to intangible. And that can be, you know, personal goodwill. Um, it can be customer lists. It can be staff tenure, um, phone number, website. I mean, you know, you can go down and, and list any number of intangible assets that you can try to assign value to. Um, and you know that that you know we touched on this you and I did before we got on the official recording but you know some portion of every practice is tied to the provider um i think most people think of the provider as the doctor that owns the business but you really i think also have to think about the hygienist as well because they also have a very um oftentimes deep relationship with the patient base and can have a direct impact on where patients, you know, decide to, to um, seek care. Um, You know, the other, the other, you know, big ones, you know, as you touched on earlier, the non-compete, which can be tricky, I think, from a valuation perspective, because, in a lot of states, there's some new trends and new laws very much restricting non-competes. And when you talk about, um, especially a DSO transaction, there's typically two levels of non-compete for the seller. There's the non-compete relative to the management of the practice and the ownership of the practice. And then there's a non-compete relative to the practice of dentistry. And typically speaking, the practice of dentistry piece of it is is more difficult to be enforceable, especially over a large radius or a long period of time. Whereas the management aspect of the non-compete is the one that probably holds up more, um, but may not be as limiting to a seller, depending on what they're hoping to do post-closing. 